Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where we are going to write some code today. No, we're not. We're going to get something else to write some code for us. Because what we're going to do is have a look at Bamboo Lib, which is one of the new low code things that we've got inside a Databricks notebook, where we can click some buttons and it'll write some code. And I don't have to write any code. And that's great. So this happened a little bit like, sort of, uh, towards the start of last year. Databricks acquired a company called 8080 Labs. Now, 88 Labs are well known for making Bamboo Lib, which is a low code UI for essentially writing pandas code for you. So, you've been writing a lot of Python, you've been kind of exploring data frames using pandas and kind of just doing a load of data transformation, you might already be familiar with it. Now, we saw Databricks buy, you know, acquire the company 88 Labs, and then we kind of all went quiet. And what I actually missed was last year in November, uh, the public preview came out saying you can now use Bamboo Lib in Angular. It's now in there in a notebook. You can initialize it, start using it, click a few buttons, and it'll spit out the pandas code that you can use. Now, obviously that links in with a load of new stuff and it uses all the new uh, IPy widgets and it has to be essentially a certain version of Databricks runtimes. Lots of requirements, but actually now it's been out for a little while, that sh those requirements should be absolutely fine. So we're going to have a look, play around, bring in some sample data, transform it, select some columns, aggregate it, do whatever we want, and just see how it works. That is the plan today. Write some code without writing any code. See how it goes. As always, if you're new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. And one of the interesting things, I rarely ever use Pandas. I am very much on the Sparky side of things. I use PySpark and data frames all my life. So what are you trying to do with Pandas? Are there any functions that you always use that aren't currently in there? Have you tried to use Bamboo Lib in Angular and you can't quite do everything? Or, or has it just revolutionized how you work? Or have you found a lot of your data analysts are just loving it because it's made the code so much more accessible and they can do stuff with data, get it right, sling it over to your engineers who then productionize and turn it into nice, robust production code. Love to hear how you guys are actually using it currently. But if you're not using it and you want to see what it looks like, let's go and have a look. So, the one nice thing is we have a lot of documentation. So yes, it is in public preview. Yes, you need to take it with a pinch of salt if you think about using it for production, for making gold standard data and using it to run your business. It's preview. There will be some bugs and errors. You might come across some unsupported functions, that kind of stuff. Um, but there's a huge amount of documentation already because again, it's a very fairly mature package. It's just new to be inside Databricks. Again, you have to be using runtime 11 plus because it's relying on some things like the IPy widgets and some things that went in last year to allow some interactivity inside the outputs of a particular notebook cell. And that requires a load of things. And they went in Dedrix runtime 11. So as long as you're using 11 plus, you can use all of this stuff. Now it then goes through, it teaches you a quick start stuff. We're going to go through the same thing. I'm going to cheat and copy that because we're going to be writing that command anyway. And then there's just an absolute ton of stuff in here. Loads and loads of examples and scenarios and what if this happens? What if that happens? What if, how do I do that? Tons and tons and tons of stuff. We're not going to walk through all of that today. Go have a look if you're interested. I'll drop a link to this, uh, these docs in the description down below. So we're going to start here. I'm going to start with an absolutely blank notebook and just try and have a play from there. So that first thing you saw me do is that pip install bamboo lib. So percentage pip, that's that function that essentially adds packages, goes to the PyPy, downloads something, installs it into your PySpark session. So this is a session scoped library installation. So I could go and take Bamboo Lib and just install it on my cluster if I wanted to. Uh, and that goes through, it'll download a load of stuff. Then it'll restart your Python interpreter. So we should see down at the bottom. There we go. So I already had everything installed and it should have gone and restarted Python. I can then go and start having a play with it. So step one, you need to install the library. If you don't, when you try and import the library, it's going to go, I don't know what that is. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to import bamboo lib. And then convention seems to be as bam. I like it. It's very dynamic. Bam. Um, and that goes off. Download like so I've initialized it uh, in my current py, uh, Python session. And then all we need to do is go bam. So calling that kind of, you know, the, the main core that, uh, function initializes the bamboo lib UI. So I can now see I've now got a little thing I can go and have a play with. It's going to be some options. I can go and read a CSV that's held locally, go and read a Parquet file, load a database table I've already saved into Hive or not try Unity Catalog. Yeah. Or we can load some dummy data. 
So it's giving us a, little, a few starting points. We can also start it by having already brought in some data into a pandas data frame and then say just do bamboo lib on that thing. So for now, I'm going to grab some dummy data just so we have something to play with. So I've got some different data sets. Let's go with the sales data set. I'm going to call it DF because I'm a criminal. And, you know, I'm the kind of person who labels, labels my variables as I and Y, which confuses everybody. <laughs> um, so, yes, I've got a data frame. We can start having a play with this. And that's it. So that's already written some code for me. So if I go down, we can see the, the pandas code is written. Let's import pandas as PD, import numpy as MP, data frame equals PD.readCSV. It's already written something to actually go and get some data for me. Again, that's using that sample data set. But if I was using just a, a CSV that I had access to that I'd mounted or put in DBFS or something, then I could just put a path in there and then I'd have the similar code. So it's gone through and it's initialized some data. I can see that data. I can go and have a play with it. Dug into it. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and then I've got some different actions I can do with it. So I've got a ton of actions in terms of just data transformations. I can go and create some kind of visualization. I can go and actually sort of plot out the data and see something. Or I can explore it. And I think I just clicked accidentally. That's exploring the data is actually really, really powerful. It's a bit like the if you're in Databricks and you're, you know, can you initialize a data frame, you just do a display and you can click the, you know, go and look at the data, profile my data for me. This is essentially data profiling that's built in. So I can just click, go and explore my data. It gives me a glimpse. It gives me unique values, missing values, just general information about the things. I can drill into a column to get some more stats, the top 10 values, the cumulative counts, lots of different things to just tell me about it. Just go and explore it and tell me how it actually sort of, you know, splits out and kind of the distribution of those things. Tell me how I predict this column based on other factors. Just lots of actually really, really useful things just automatically baked in to the UI based on, you know, various different things that we can go and have a play with. So, yeah, really, really, really interesting. Just data exploration, data... Essentially, if you're thinking you're going to end up doing some data science, you think you're doing that initial exploratory data analysis, then explore data frame, load of stuff baked in just to help you understand the data, understand what the data looks and feels like, how it's spread out, how skewed it is, all of that stuff. You can get a lot of that from exploring your data frame. Already super useful, really cool. But let's go and do something. I want to transform my data. I just want to do some just sales categorization. How are my different regions performing or countries performing? Oh, normal analytics kind of stuff. So firstly, I've got way too much data. I've got loads and loads of info in here. I just want to trim this down a bit. You can do a select. You can select or drop columns. So am I selecting or am I dropping? Well, I just want to select a certain subset of columns. Choose my columns. Well, just region, country. I'll grab some of those. I could say just give me all strings. Give me all uh, things that are integer or things that match a certain pattern. I can do some slightly more advanced things in here, but I can just go, I just want to pick up some stuff and I want profit. So a bunch of descriptors uh, and then a nice little kind of thing I'm actually trying to count. I'm going to keep that called data frame. So that's going to overwrite my existing data frame with the updated transformed version of itself. And we can see, I automatically see what this looks like now. So I've just got the columns I've selected and see down below, it's added another little comment step and it's added a new transformation, changing my data frame and selecting a subset of records of columns. Now, I'll admit, I'll admit, I learned something here. I was not aware with a data frame, you can actually just, you know, pass in a Python index and say, just keep these things. I assumed you always had to do data frame select, and that's how I train people because that's the, the more correct way of doing things. But that's actually super useful if you just want to pick out certain columns. Yeah, so I learned things based on the output of the low code, which is great. You can say, well, how do, how do I do that? Take the code, look at the code and go, oh, cool, that's how that works. I know for next time, I can just want to write the code myself. Just super useful. Okay, other things we can do. I want to. I want to filter it. I just want to say I only want to. I want to get rid of rows that meet a certain filter criteria. Um, so where region has values, yeah, it makes sense. So I could do it on other columns. I could do it between ranges, all that stuff. Uh, actually, no, I want to do it on a particular country. Certain countries I don't want to have in here. Uh, sure, I just want those. Yeah, don't want those. Okay, cool. So we can add filters in. We can kind of have a plane. Just normal transformation stuff. And you can see it's just adding these as different steps. Almost like watching the um, the data frame explain plan build up its various execution steps, just going and doing some things on my data set, which is cool. Uh, and then do some more stuff. So I can do group buys and aggregates. I can go and have a play with some other things. Again, a ton, a ton of different transformations in here, doing some actually really, really interesting stuff. Uh, there's one in there, which is really which is binning. 
I can get it to create some kind of you know just different categories for my data. So before we go and do that, let's just take that code as it is, my little filtered or my filtered data set, pump that out. So I can just copy that code, run it. It'll tell me I can use bamboo lib. Yeah, thanks. I know. <laughs> and then we've got that data set. That's now a banded data frame I can go and use. I can also just call that. That'll give me a, a little summary glimpse of my data and also a link back into bamboo lib. So I can kind of, I can do some stuff, write it as code and then go back and do some more stuff and then write more code and keep hopping back and forth into bamboo lib, which is just a nice useful way of working with this stuff. Now, you know, if you're like me and old and cynical, you want to just see what this looks like in, in Sparky world, we can take a pandas data frame converter over into Spark. So I can say my Spark data frame is going to be Spark dot. I just do create. Create data frame from that Python uh, pandas data frame. Put it in. There we go. I've got a normal Spark data frame. I can then do normal Sparky things with it. Just go and do explain. So I can see, I mean, this is a local table scan because it's going from the, the sample data, but I can see what the different Spark steps is going to go through. Uh, I can just do a display. So I can go and actually just run use a Spark engine, go and have a look at that data. I can go and use it anywhere I want. You can write it down to a delta table, whatever I happen to be doing. You know, so you can always go back and then start using things the way you would normally do things in Spark if you want to go that route. Um, and then, yeah, let's do the other interesting thing. Let's go binning things. So a bin is creating just buckets, groups of values that are similar. So I want to create some profit bins. So this is essentially saying I've got all these different discrete uh, values for my bins. I've got or profit could be anything. It's a big old number. But actually, I want you to create 10 categories, lumping things together into ranges from 0 to 100, 100 to 200, 200 to 550, whatever that is. Split the things out and go and make it for me. So in this case, I'm just going to have default labels, which is the upper and lower boundary. I could go and, you know, it should be inclusive, not inclusive, all that stuff. Go make that. So you can see that's just overwritten my existing profit with actually the bucket, the boundary that each uh, record actually falls into. So I can see those different buckets it's created for me, which is kind of cool. But in that case, it's overwritten the existing one, which is, oh, okay, maybe I didn't want it to do that. So I've got a few things in here. Firstly, we've got the history of the different steps that's happened. So you can see we did a select, we did a drop, and then bin column is the current step, and we can go and edit that last step. There's a shortcut to that, which is that little pencil. Let's just edit the last step. So I can go in and change what we did with that bin. I'm like, oh, I, I didn't want to replace the total profit. I wanted to make that a separate column. I want to include that. So it's working the same way as if you've got a data frame and you say, you know, dot with column and you give it the same name as the existing column, it's going to override that column. Give it a new name, it'll append it as a new column. I've now got total profit and then the relevant bin. So I can say, well, why did that fall into that bin? Oh, okay, because the value actually falls between those two ranges. And I can now go see what it looks like. Just useful things you can do uh, just in this gigantic pile of built-in actions. So really, really cool. So we can do data conversions. We can do pivoting. We can do loads of stuff. Um, again, anytime we're doing something, we can then go and say, what was the code for that? pd.cut. Okay, interesting. Bins equals 10. Makes sense. That's the options going in. Take that, copy it, use it elsewhere. Uh, our final button we've got is just creating a plot. I want to go and create, create some data. Uh, I've got to create some visuals based on the, the things I've got. So I'm going to create a bar plot. It's like, well, okay, you now need to give me some info. So all the different properties my visualization might have are just available in here. So my x-axis, I just want that to be my particular region. You can see it. So it's assumed, uh, and I'm just using count for my y-axis. Actually, I want to use total profit. So you can see how that goes into things. I can see how the total profit actually breaks down. Automatically got kind of, you know, the various different things inside there. Just, yeah, useful stuff. Well, that, yeah, no, it's, no it's, it's not done them in the right order. So do I have x-axis? Do I have like a, a sorting for that? Well, you can just search between all these different properties that you've got in there. So you can actually just go and have a play with that. I do have x-axis uh, in here. x-axis. Uh, category order. There we go. It'll be ascending alphabetically. Ah, there we go. It's tidied up. It's now going through alphabetically. So everything I want to do with that and to, to change it, to have a play around, I can build them out of properties. I can then say, what was the code to do that? Cool. So it's automatically using Plotly. It's built it as a bar. It's updated all the things. So if you're trying to figure out how to make this re reproducible in local Python, it's written the code for me. Right, cool. And yeah. That's that's all I wanted to go through today. Just showing you the different bits and pieces 
of how it's building up the various different bits of Python code, how it's building the pandas commands for you. You can take that out, you can pull it back into Spark. The sheer number of different transformations that are already put in there by default. And then the extra stuff you've got in terms of that data analysis, the data profiling, understanding the size and shape and skew of your data. And then the nice visualization stuff that's baked into it. Again, it is still just using things like Plotly. You can, of course, save this as a table, then use data with SQL, and then make a slightly nicer dashboard. You know, you could then actually take those tables that you've saved and just go and analyze it in, you know, Power BI Tableau, your choice of BI tool. Loads and loads of stuff you can do. So if you are struggling with wrangling data and getting data into the right shape and just want a bit of a helping hand, or you've built a big old lake and you've got loads of data, but you're struggling to get your analysts on board because they've got the tools that they know and love and they want to be able to bring those skills in, or they don't have those skills and they want an easier way to be able to start working with data. So that is what Bamboo Lib is for. There's a ton and ton of stuff in there. And actually, it's pretty fun. There's lots of stuff you can play with. So uh, yeah, no, cool. Bamboo Lib baked into Databricks now. It's still in public preview. So take it with a pinch of salt. Don't use it for too many very, very serious decision-making things. Or actually, you can trust the data. Just occasionally, you might try and use a function and then do another function on top of it. And you'll get an error going, those two things don't go together. Not going to handhold you too much if you try and do two crazy things in a row, basically. But yeah, I'd love to know how people are getting on with it. Are people using it yet? Did anyone know about this? Have you seen the news and started working with it? Love to hear what people are doing and how you guys are getting on. And yeah, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.